fourth live case of today is a TAVI performed by Dr. Thielmann in a patient with a pure aortic regurgitation. It's a 75-year-old male patient with normal weight and height and a logistic Euroscore of 26.17% and Euroscore 2 of 10.77% and an STS score of 11.5%. He suffers from a pure aortic regurgitation grade 2 to 3, a three-vessel disease, a reduced LV function and renal insufficiency. He suffers from dyspnea with a reduced functional status, New York Heart Class 2 to 3. He had a prior cabbage in 1989 in our hospital. And prior to the TAVI, we performed a PCI with a drug eluting stand implantation. This coronary angiography show the result of the stenting. In this TOE, you can see the aortic regurgitation. The AVA is 2.8 square centimeters. The annulus size is 25 millimeters. The vena contracta, 0.41 centimeters. And the PHT, 322 milliseconds. We measured the annulus size in the CT scan. And there, we found a diameter of 23.62 and 25 0.22 millimeters, and valve area of 463 square millimeters, and a perimeter of 76.73 millimeters. So we are going to perform the transapical access through the fifth intercostal space. The indication for this operation was made by our heart team and he's a very high-risk candidate. Our surgical strategy will be a transapical TAVI with a Sumitis accurate size L. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, from the hybrid OR. I think we choose a quite interesting case for you. Um, we are treating the same disease uh, of a patient like in OR number one uh, from Professor El Khoury and Dr. Benedict. But in our case, we have a high-risk patient having had uh, a redo um, uh, cabbage uh, in 2009. But um, yeah, so <clears throat> first of all, I think we should uh, watch the TEE. My colleague, uh, uh, Mrs. Eisman, will show us some interesting pictures. So, All right. Ma Mareike. Uh, good morning again. Um, as we can see here, there is a slight difference to the, to the case in OR1. Um, <coughs> we do see um, the aortic groove, um, but we do see this is not dilated this time. But we see here also in the, already in the native view that there's a cooptation lag. And uh, adding color to it, we see that there's uh, seriously is a uh, moderate, more like a severe aortic regurgitation. Um, vena contracta here was measured um, 0.6 centimeters, so this is a classification of the severe aortic uh, regurgitation. Um, and we see that the problem is that the leaflets are thickened, but also that there is a slight prolapse of the, of the leaflets. Um, and so um, analysis was measured. Let me get that picture. And analysis in uh, this measurement was uh, measured 26 millimeters. Um, and as I said, the um, dimensions of the aortic root were um, pretty much normal. It was not enlarged. So um, this is it from the echo. So you see, this is a quite tricky case. Um, the valve is um, absolutely not calcified. Um, instead of Professor El Khoury, who told us that he doesn't like calcium to do aortic valve repair, we, as uh, TAVI operators, we usually like calcium very much. But in this case, we don't have any calcium at all. And uh, our strategy is to do, via the transapical access, a uh, cymatis accurate TA um, transapical valve. So 
I think we should start. We have prepared everything um, regarding the access. Maybe you can zoom in with your camera. We did the apical suturing with our technique. We use uh, four U-pledged um, sutures. Can you zoom on it? No, you can't. So then we start with our procedure. We puncture the left ventricle. So usually you are used to have a balloon valvuloplasty in aortic stenosis patients. We don't have to do that in these patients, of course, so we can go straight forward. We uh, insert now the right Rudkin's catheter to cross the aortic arch. Okay, this is quite easy here. And now we change to the super stiff wire, as you know that from the regular transapical procedure. The valve is already crimped. We use a large valve, the annulus, as you have heard already, Annulus is 25 to 26 in echo and 24 to 25 at the CT measurement. So the size L valve should be, should be fit. So this is still an off-label procedure, but uh, I will show you some data later. So we have very good experience using the Sapien, uh, the, the Cymetis Accurate Valve in such cases. Uh -huh. No. Mach mal ein bisschen den Draht. Gib mir ein bisschen mehr Draht. Wir brauchen dann etwas mehr Druck. Can you see the Kopf mal weg. Okay, so we have to cross the aortic valve. Yeah, zeig. I'm starting right now to to release the valve a little bit that the nose cone can go into the aortic arch. Ist ein bisschen zu schräg hier, Leute. Ich ein bisschen Kontrastmittel. Okay. Druck ist gut, ja. So this is uh, now the first step to open the upper crown of this of the valve. And as you can see, I'm turning the valve to see the commissures, the advantage of this valve is that you can try to implant the valve in commissural alignment. So the commissure between a coronary and left coronary cusp is posterior in this picture. And if I'm turning the delivery system to the right, then the commissure in the middle should be anterior. If I'm turning to the left. Now, now I should be in the commissural alignment. You see the middle commissure should be posterior now. Good. So hemodynamic is fine. We need to refill our contrast media first before... Mm -hmm. The pacing. Okay, now. Good. Normal contrast. Okay. So. Pacing. Um, 
I think because of the movement of the valve, we should try to do some kind of slow rapid pacing, yes. slow pacing. 110, please, 110. Pacing start. 110, yeah? So I have to pull the valve into the annulus. Oh. So stop pacing. Been durch, oder? Mm -hmm. I have to resheet now. Ich glaube, ich bin durchgerutscht. Huh? Okay, so now I'm back. Zeig mal, filme. Yeah, it's a quite tricky case, so it's nothing usual. More pacing. Pacing? Yes. Starting. Yeah. Yeah. Das lasse jetzt sich frei, oder? Ja. So now the valve is released. I have to be very careful to pull back this delivery system, not to push the upper rim, uh, the, the lower rim of the stand. Put pacing stop. Okay. So, zeig mal. Ja. Looks not bad. So now I have to pull out the delivery system first. Darf ich ein bisschen so we rein? Dann mache ich ein bisschen weiter rein, einmal die Sonde und dann bin ich auch direkt startklar hier. Okay. So may we have a, dann machen wir den Draht raus. A last final um, shot into the route because they have to. Okay. So you see it looks pretty good and the position of the valve is also very good. So I heard that we have to switch to the other OR. Maybe we can back, come back later to, to uh, watch the TEE. Thank you very much. So uh, I think it's absolutely worth to demonstrate our result. And um, let's look first on the angiography. And as you can see, a really good result. We have a slight AR. We would stratify as trace. And the position is very fine. Then looking to the echo, Ms. Eismann, please, can you comment on that? but it's, um, uh, we just have to show you that because it's beautiful. Here you can see the deployment of the valve, like that's the way it was released. And now I just switch to the live mode. This is live pictures. And you can see that the valve is perfectly fine, fitted to the wall, and it's, it's, it just fits in there uh, beautifully. Uh, and adding color to it, so this is a proof that it really is an uh, absolutely beautiful result. And I definitely agree it's, it's, it was worth the time, I, th I think, right? Okay, and just, the yeah. echo, the um, left ventricular septum uh, looked prominent. Um, did it have any implication in positioning of the uh, valve? Yes, um, I'm really happy that uh, this was not uh, a problem for us, but you are right, the, the septum was very prominent, but as you can see, the stent seems to be above uh, this prominent uh, septum hypertrophy. So. It's no problem for the positioning of the valve. Congratulations, very good, very impressive result. Yes, can and I, maybe can we, I can, we can have a short watch, a short look on the apex.
you see the apex is absolutely dry, no problem with suturing with our technique. Thank well, you very much. Dr. Bavaria has another question. Yes, please. So, yes, I was interested in how you uh, did the conformability. In other words, how did you get the the cementus into the into the coronary sinuses equally? Yes. Did you did you use echo or no, did you just, use just the fluoro? Just the fluoro. That's it. And, and is there any way to tell afterwards whether you did it right or not? Oh yes, we can. Maybe we can check that. I'm not sure if the if uh, Miss Eisman can. So how do you know whether you have them just perfectly? Yeah, because I know where the the commissures, uh, the commissure of the a coronary and left coronary cusp is. Is it posterior and anterior? And then I can turn my um, I can turn my delivery system and check whether my commissure is anterior and posterior. And then I can try I can try to implant the valve in commissure alignment. That's possible. That's possible only with that valve. We have another question. Well, we have to move. No, we have to move. We have to move okay. to R three. Please the hammer. Keep it in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.